Hello, good day to all of you. So let's talk about uh, modeling and characterization of magnetic heads aerial density by Doc Alre Villagracia and me, Dental Santuanya. So magnetic head is not really being talked about a lot, but actually we're gonna learn a lot of new things about magnetic heads, okay? Now I would like to start off with a brief up outline of our presentation. Okay, we're, I'm gonna introduce about aerial density and the development for this past few years. The methods of designing this model, the, what result that I got from this model and some of the conclusion that we got, okay? So introduction first, you'll see a hard disk drive, right? Or we know this one as HDD. So basically it stores information. Um, the logic here is you can imagine the disk as a piece of paper and the head or magnetic head as the pencil. So basically it writes it on the disk by doing by writing uh, or maybe inducing a magnetic field to change the direction of this grain. Okay. So basically it's a one or a zero, depending on the direction of the magnetic of the magnetic field. Okay, so you can imagine this rectangle as one piece of information. So the smaller it is, you can cover a lot of a lot of points in a specific area, and eventually you will increase your aerial density capability. So uh, two important parametric for ADC. So we call this one bit per inch, or how many bits I can store in one inch, and the track pitch, this length, or Long story short, um, how many track, tracks can I store in an inch? Uh, so basically, just get the product of that one and you will get the ADC in units, it's gigabits per inch square. Okay, that's uh, very simple. Okay, now, how do we in further increase our aerial density? So a lot of study has been made, um, like for example, Chen and Kuo, I develop a new method to further increase the aerial density by providing a 747 method and a study from Sun who further who introduced SMR measurement or shingled magnetic recording and TDMR method further increase and another study from Kayatama who introduced an STO, we call it a STO, an external, external hardware to further support the lighter. Okay, so here's a very simple figure to understand this study. So at the very beginning, we do perpendicular magnetic recording. Basically, the blue, you can imagine it as information, okay? So that's the information. But we need more. We need to squeeze more information. So a new method called shingled magnetic recording by Sun, okay? Basically, you squeeze, you squeeze more tracks as long as it, the, the track is readable and it's still okay you can get information from the squeeze track it's okay so basically we squeeze 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 as long as it's readable you can further squeeze it okay now to tdmr mode i'm getting smaller tracks but basically it's a different method to further squeeze out the track and to have a very light track or very thin track okay to further increase the aerial density. So a lot of methods, even the MAMAR or microwave assisted magnetic recording, um, you it's like getting a very sharp pencil, very thin light, and you can actually get more information because of the very thin uh, information, okay? Now here, I'll give a brief example. Um, this one is very helpful uh, for this model. Okay, let's get the idea from Chen and Ho. Okay, so this is the track. Uh, my reader is at the center, and I'm I'm measuring BER or bit error rate or symbol error rate. Basically, it's how many errors over over total. Okay, the logarithm of how many errors over total. So more negative will have less error. So the SER would be a lot better, okay? Or yeah, we can call it the performance it would be a lot better. This is at OTC zero, okay? It's at the center. But if I move further the reader, um, you can notice that the BR or symbol error rate gets 
a lot poorer because I'm actually reading all the information. Okay, so that idea is actually very important in this model. Now, let's talk another one. So what I have here is uh, two papers. Let's imagine it's a track. Okay, now logic here is, um, so one important parameter is the track pitch. So distance from center to center. So two tracks, I squeeze it. So it's with, 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 okay. Um, as long as my information is still readable or my SCR is still okay, I will further squeeze, 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 squeeze. Okay. As long as it's still good, we'll further squeeze until it reaches a destructive, before it reaches a destructive track pitch. Okay. That's actually what we want. We want to get the, it's like an optimum track pitch before destruction happen. Okay, that's really what we want right now, nowadays. Okay, so here, so again, OTC is actually proportional to SER. So higher OTC will eventually have better SER in the first place. Okay, so we will talk more about this one later, but basically I got this idea from Chen and Huo, meaning for different DPI, I want to get the KTPI before destruction happen. So that pitch is inversely proportional to KTPI. So in terms of unit track pitch is um, the length of the track. While the KTPI is the kilo track per inch. So, so how many tracks I will have per inch. Okay, so we will talk about that one uh, shortly. Now the, me the methods of designing this model. So it, it starts with data collection. So I need we made first a lot of data doing experiment, multiple testing in Western Digital in order for this model to be possible. Okay, so important information that we need is head means the spacing trend. So it's more on the distance between the head and the disk. So how is my SER and MCW behaves at different spacing or distance? Okay, so we need that information. Okay, and the position error signal response. So it's more uh, this PES is actually how my reader is vibrating on the on the center uh, above the center of the track. Okay, how much vibration and how much impact will it give uh, for uh, for the SCR and MCW and bit per inch, or you can call it a frequency. So we need to know how much impact will the speed of writing or reading affects my SER and MCW. Of that capability, meaning how much degradation I will get if my reader will go further from the disk. I mean, not from the disk, away from the center of the track, okay? So all of these are experimental data and we need this in our model. Now, so next method is generate the off track capability. So I get all my information, all my environment, ES, HMS, BPI, everything. I can generate actually this one. Okay. Later, uh, let's have a brief example about this one. Okay. Then we're gonna, since we know every, okay. Number two, main, sport, main purpose is to get the KTPI before destruction at a specific KDPI. And eventually we will get this kind of uh, plot. Okay. So um, the bar is actually bit aspect ratio is the ratio of PPI over TPI. Okay. And this is the ABC and HMS. So um, based from the study of Chen, of Chen 1, okay, we will get this kind of curve and the peak point of the, or the vertex of that parabolic curve is actually the maximum ABC. And we can actually do computation, uh, computation about it. Okay. So that's the method. Now let's talk about the result of the model. Okay, now um, I got the head mid spacing based on experiment and I got this kind of behavior. So how much is my SCR MCW behaves at the change in HMS? Okay, I also got uh, KBPI or frequency, how much SCR and MCW is changing at different frequency and the PES track, how much change in SCR as my reader vibrates a lot at the center of the track. Okay. So here's a very short info, a very short description uh, to understand. HMS is how close is the head climb on top of my disk. 
BPI is how fast the head is writing or reading. PS, how strong is the vibration during the during reading? Okay, so that information is actually very important because um, if I have a magnetic head and if I would induce it in the, with this kind of environment, I would get an idea on how much this head or magnetic head will get affected okay, with this kind of behavior. So all of this data comes from measurement and experiment, okay, to know how the SER and MCW behaves at different environment. Okay. Now, eventually, we're going to still make use of this very important formula. Again, ADC is just the product of BPI and TPI. And bar is the ratio of BPI and TPI. And here's an example. So this is OTC and KDPI. Again, again, I will repeat, um, for every BPI, I, I want to get the KDPI before destruction. Okay. So, for example, this 1472, let's have it here. So, I would get this KTPI. The red one, let's think of it as a destructive area. So, and we don't want to go that far. Okay. So, this is my KDPI and this is the BPI, uh, KTPI that I will get before uh, destruction happen. Okay. Now, just plug in this formula and eventually you will get this kind of Behavior. So for every BPI, you will need to get figure out the KTPI before destruction. Okay, and eventually you will get this 3D model. So um PA TES lock percent bar. Basically, this is a combination of BPI and TPI, the bar, and this is the aerial density capability, the y-axis. And the legend, I'll make use of the HMS. So this is the beauty of the 3D model. Okay. You can actually get an idea how your magnetic head behaves at different environment. Okay, so uh, you can see obviously the the HMS 3.0 NM, which is the furthest from the disk, will give the lowest ADC. Okay, that's the beauty of this one. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so this is not po uh, possible if I didn't get any experimental data. So that's one thing. Okay, now if I compare it with uh, for a different study, uh, Chen Hua just get uh, get this uh, profile, the bar versus, uh, I mean the ADC versus bar. Okay, in this model, um, we made use of different environments. Okay, so uh, in this study, he made use of one dimensional, but in this study, uh, I made, uh, we made a 3D model with different uh, environments, so the impact of every environment. Okay. So eventually we will get the maximum um, ADC. So just get the maximum of every plot of every curve. And based from the study, I I would get the maximum ADC if I set my P as a percentage to 6.2% at the spacing of 0 0.4 Nm. Okay. This one is the like the optimum setting which I need in order to get the maximum ADC, okay? So that's the beauty of this 3D model, okay? Hope you guys understand it. Now, long story short, let's try to conclude. The, so this model is actually beneficial to quickly understand how magnetic recording works. Okay, so we talked about the importance of SER and MCW uh, when it, because it imp really impacts the ADC. And how the PES, HMS, BPI, those environments affects the magnetic head in terms of SER and MCW. And we know that going for, going closer to the disk, disk will have a higher ADC value and because the SER gets a lot better. And the bar, we can actually get the maximum ADC by getting the vertex of the curve. And based from this experimental data that I got in this model, I would get a maximum ADC of 6.2% at the spacing of 0.4 Nm, okay? Now, I would like to thank the Western Digital because uh, without their ex without their ideas to resources and giving me a lot of experiment, uh, this model is actually impossible to make, okay? So I would like to thank Western Digital for giving all the resources for this model. And I would like to also thank this resource, this resource. So thank you all for listening. Hope you understand and hope that uh, we learn a lot okay, about magnetic heads. So thank you and have a great day.